Now, uh, how did you actually connect with your group? I know you said you started rapping in like 83, but did y'all all just start off together or y'all just kind of linked up with it afterwards? Man, well, A Plus was a person who got me on, but basically we all went to the same elementary. So me, A Plus, Dale and Casual all went to Howard Elementary in, in East Oakland. And so when we grew up, like rap was new. So it was just something to do. There's no way to really explain hip hop to somebody who didn't grow up in that era because it was like, closest thing is probably the internet. You know what I mean though? Like it was a new way of interacting and thinking about the world. And you know, once once we saw it, you know, graffiti. Also, I think in the eighties, you just felt like it was the future. You know what I'm saying though? Like you look at all your, all the old TV shows and leave it to Beaver and you know, Andy Griffith and all that. And it was black and white. And then we're in the eighties where everything is like, you know, angular and, you know, DeLorean, you know, going doors and Porsche, every bright color. So hip hop just kind of, you know, with the graffiti and with the with the beats coming out of uh, machines and stuff, it was something that we all were into. And so in elementary school, we decided, you know what, we're just going to start writing rap. It was just something you did. Everybody break dance, everybody, you know, played around with the graffiti stuff and everybody uh, rap. And uh, A plus was uh, one of the, he was like a man child almost. He had a, a vision that was, you know, bigger than us doing it kind of for fun, you know? And then Dell's cousin was Cube. So once Cube got on, he put Dell on. And then Dell was like, yo, when I come through the door, everybody's coming through the door. And, and the rest is history. So, you know, Dell's first record came out in 91. So that was, uh, I was maybe a junior in high school or maybe a senior by then. And he put us on a B side called Burnt on the other side of Mr. Mr. Dabalina's album. And, yeah. And it just started popping from then on. So it, it's been a blessing that we even, you know, because we grew up all walking distance from each other. But the fact that we grew up walking distance from each other and then we all had this thing, hip hop, you know, which is kind of like a, a, a new way of, of understanding community and communicating and all that, that, that sort of changed our lives. And then now, 30 plus years later, you know, 40 years later, really, um, I mean, like literally like what, 39 years later, we still together doing it you know it's, it's uh it's like it mm. formed a strong nucleus that, that holds us all together you know wow man that's a major blessing because that's a uh a, a high concentration a high powered lyricist in one neighborhood you know what i'm saying like yeah. man, a lot of people don't got it like that and then y'all met in elementary school most of the legendary rap groups they may have met in high school maybe junior high maybe mm -hmm. college but elementary school shit yeah, so I mean, we were friends beforehand too. We played with you know, GI Joes and the little vibrating football and actual football, all these things together. And I think really, we're all from. It's like the same sort of East Oakland around eighty second over in that area, and um, you know, it, the to me the biggest blessing is that there's so many pitfalls that we could have fallen for because we grew up in the prime crack era. You know what I'm saying? They're like we. We had the end of pimping and, and heron in the beginning of crack, you know, and we could have all participated in that. But we had something else, you know, that 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 occupied our minds and gave us a reason to not participate because we needed to be free. And we and we had a way to express ourselves and, and be fly and be fresh without it being something where we needed to necessarily grind, you know, or hustle to, to, to do that. You know, I mean, I say hip hop kept us safe, you know, because to a lot. It's really different now. Kids don't understand. Like, I got a job just to get some Jordans. Like, it wasn't, you know, I didn't, have, you know, I got a job. Like, you, you, your parents just didn't get you stuff like that. You didn't, you know, it was like the fifty dollars, a hundred dollars. That's a a week's paycheck. You know what I mean? So, we didn't have all the fly stuff that every all the kids kind of have now. Like right now, you know, you can be on a cool little budget, but still go to even Walmart or something, come with something fly. We was really hand me downs and and. You know, like even the ripped jeans and all that, it's just from wearing your jeans so much that they, they ripped until it became a style. Then you started cutting them up and your mom be yelling at you, why, why are you destroying good clothes? But so hip hop gave us the ability to be fresh and fly without it having to be a, a change in our financial position. And now, I mean, of course, we've been fortunate that we've been able to to to, to upgrade our finances based on it. But it, it gave us something that I think kept us safe and healthy and, and away from a lot of the pitfalls that I think a lot of the homies are still dealing with. I got homies who were just getting out from then, you know, who, who did 30 years, you know, did 25 years, some still in, 
And it's 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 crazy how it was just like, I mean, good, good family structure, good, good teachings and all that. But it really was like, I'm going to be a rapper, dude. I'm going to, you know, we cut our, cut our hair in the kitchen how we want. You know, we couldn't afford no haircut, but we could still cut it mm-hmm. how everybody wanted and all that kind of stuff. And we, we could be cool and hip without having to really necessarily get out on the block and have to get it, you know? And I, I think that, that to me is the biggest blessing, you know, lyricism aside, I think with the lyricism, it's like iron sharp, sharpens iron. When I'm writing raps, I'm writing to beat Hyro. Like I'm not even thinking about cats outside of my, my, my immediate cypher really, you know, because I don't really not to be gassed or nothing, but I don't really even, it's like, no, I did that. You know what I'm saying? It's really like, I listen to a Cas song or a plus song or Festo D or something like that and be like, oh, okay, I got to get on his helmet. You know? Man, that's dope. That's dope. I'm glad you mentioned that, man. Wow. That's amazing. Now you said, I think you said Dale's album was in 91 and then mm-hmm. uh, 93 until infinity. So was y'all already signed at that point or was y'all still grinding, trying to get into the game? Yeah. Oh no. Nah. Dale put out, put us on burnt. And as soon as that came out, we started getting, um, noticed by labels so you know dante ross who signed dale started trying to sign casual and sophia chang who also signed like the fushnikins and stuff she she uh she started thinking about signing us at, at jive stretch and bobito who was stretch armstrong and reef were trying to sign us to big beat atlantic so we started traveling in 91 92 to um to new york and and doing the negotiations and all that kind of stuff and by the time like we, we signed like right after the riots in 92. I remember because we was in we were wow. in New York during the riots. I remember because we was watching it on TV at the Empire Hotel. So we signed like right after that. Oh, wow. Wow, man. That's definitely a classic album. A five mic is still staying the test of time.